going on guys? Jason here from The Comprehensive Dentist. Today I want to do a little video about clinical photography. Now this past week I was actually teaching a clinical photography class to some of my residents. And so we spent a lot of time talking about cameras, talking about the kind of materials you would need to do photography for your patients. And we also spent some time talking about how to properly position the patient as well. All right, so today we're going to talk about some of the things that you will need if you're going to do clinical photography on your patients. Now, first and foremost, you're going to need a camera. I recommend using a DSLR camera like this one where you have a separate body, a separate lens, and in this case, we actually have a ring flash mounted to the camera. This is just one example of a camera that you may purchase. This is a Canon. I know there's a lot of Nikon users out there as well, or people that really like Nikon. Either camera is going to be fine. I tend to gravitate towards Canon personally because that's what I was trained on and that's what I've always used. This is a really good setup because number one, you're going to get high quality photos with a camera like this. Uh, the cameras that they're making right now, even the cheaper DSLRs are still going to give you great quality photos. This specific camera is broken down in three major parts. You have the body of the camera, which is this kind of big area right here. You have the lens of the camera. Specifically for dental photography, I like to use a macro lens. This is a 100 millimeter macro lens. That's going to allow you to get real up and close and real personal with the patient's teeth. And you're going to be able to see that detail really well with these kind of lenses. The third part of your setup for your camera is going to be some type of ring flash or macro ring flash and basically this mounts to my macro lens and this allows you to get a ton of light into the mouth because when you're shooting really up close and personal and the mouth is dark by nature anyway you gotta shoot a ton of light in there so you can properly expose your images so you're definitely going to need these three parts of the camera to really get good quality photos in addition to your camera you're probably going to want to get some other things as well that's going to give you different angles and allow you to see different views of the teeth. You sometimes will need something like retractors, which is what I have here. These are an example of metal retractors. You can also get clear retractors as well. Really, either way, they're designed to retract the cheeks and to pull the cheeks in the lips off of the teeth so you can see the teeth more clearly. Some other stuff you're going to maybe want to get if you're going to do clinical photography would be some mirrors. Now behind me here I have a variety of mirrors. I'm just going to show you a couple that I commonly use. This mirror here is a occlusal mirror. It's mirrored on both sides. Mirrors like this you can buy these from different companies. They come in different sizes. They make small, medium, large, uh, pedo size mirrors. Usually a standard size mirror like this one is going to be more than adequate for the majority of your patient. And then also something like this mirror here which you can use for buckle views of the teeth or you can even use them for lingual views of the teeth. Mirrors like this are kind of handy for getting up close and personal on a specific quadrant of the mouth. I'm going to provide you some links to some websites like PhotoMed, um, Lester Dine is another one that's pretty common. But there's a lot of different companies out there that will package photography kits specifically for dentists. And you can actually get the camera, the ring flash, the macro lens, and mirrors and retractors all in one kit. Makes it kind of easy if you like to buy that way. Some people actually like to kind of piecemeal everything together. You know, get a separate lens from the body and a separate ring flash. I would just caution you about doing that because sometimes if the components aren't of the same brand, they may not communicate well together. Could cause some issues for you, some headaches if you have to send something back and try to figure out what's not working. I shoot Canon, so everything I have here is Canon. Canon lens, body, and ring flash. It just makes things easy. They communicate well together. I really don't have to worry about my equipment. I just need to learn how to use the equipment. Another thing you may want to get is something like this. It's a contrastor. And these are pretty cool because you can actually place this in the patient's mouth and it creates a nice black backdrop to really show the teeth and accent the teeth. It's great for documenting aesthetic cases or anything where you're going to have good before and after photos. So something like this is relatively inexpensive but can make a huge difference in the quality of your photos if you're doing aesthetic dentistry. The last thing I'm going to show you today is this device here 
which is a mirror holder. A mirror like this, if you're trying to hold it in the mouth, sometimes you have an issue of having the fingers actually creep in on the edges of the mirror and it's hard to get those out of the frame. So you can buy a mirror handle like this one and you basically attach your mirror to this. It holds the mirror in place so you can actually allow your hands to get away from the mirror. It allows you to see things a little bit easier. You're less likely to get the fingers and gloves and all that stuff into the photo. I hope this was helpful, helpful to you. Um, I hope you find this useful. Feel free to comment down below. I'll be more than happy to give you more details. Check out the links down below to some of the photo places that you can actually go and purchase your cameras or your kits for your dental photography. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. All right, that's going to be it for this one. We'll see you next time.